And good morning. What is Level 1? Well, Level 1 uh, would be obviously the next extension if we were to um, go down even further uh, beyond Level 2. And the main thing there is that uh, it would remove some of the requirements around physical distancing and at the same time would open up um, you know, larger gatherings, so those so-called mass gatherings. At the moment, gatherings are limited to 100 people. In Level 1, they could be larger. OK, so everything would be back to normal at Level 1, bar being able to travel overseas anywhere you want, any time you like? Well, not back to normal because uh, we've got to remember there's still a pandemic out there. So for the first thing, uh, instance, uh, there's going to be those strong measures at the border uh, to control and make sure we're preventing cases coming into the country. But also there will be still measures in place to help reduce the likelihood of infection between people inside the country. So those basic public health measures are still really important. Would you see the problem that a lot of people have is it's still a month away before a decision is made. Some epidemiological work was done. We need 37 to 44 days of basically no cases to have a 99% chance that the thing is gone. Is that the sort of numerology you're looking at? Well, that's part of it, Mike. But also, as, as just a reminder, there's still this active pandemic going on out there. Uh, and New Zealand's actually be, being able to move out of um, the lockdown-style restrictions actually far faster than any other country. I mean, if we're the UK and we'd still be in lockdown now, we would have had 3,500 deaths and we'd still have yeah. uh, about 250 cases a day. So um, this is not slow by international comparisons. It's well, when you say incredible. that, Spain's got the borders open for July holidays. We're all going on holiday. We don't have the borders open. Yeah, it's not July yet uh, here, and Spain has had a much different picture than New Zealand has had. What we're confident about, of course, is that as we ease out of uh, alert level, uh, you know, alert level two, ease up to the 100 for gathering sizes, and then into alert level one, we can have a high degree of confidence we're not going to sort of unleash um, further clusters around the country, and that's where we want to be. A couple of things out uh, offshore I'm not sure you're aware of. Britain, there was some modelling yesterday. They think it's done by September, eradicated by September. They also talk of a vaccine by September. Do you believe either of those stories? Well, a vaccine by September would be well ahead of what everybody else is saying around the world. I mean, people are saying 12 to 18 months, uh, even with all the effort that's going on. And it's one thing to have a vaccine. You've then got to manufacture it at great volume and, of course, administer it to your whole population. Um, I think done by September is a very um, uh, sort of aspirational goal, but I, I haven't seen any other information that would suggest that's going to be the case. In fact, the WHO have been very clear that this thing is going to keep going on for some time. There's also some T-cell work. It's T-cells and people with COVID have poor T-cells. If you can boost the T-cells, there's something there. Do you know about that? Well, there's a lot of effort going into different treatment options. And I mean, even here in New Zealand, we're already collecting uh, our, our blood service is collecting plasma from people who have had COVID infection to, to keep these stocks of uh, plasma with antibodies to use with people who might be infected. So a whole lot of different treatments are being explored and the T-cell uh, sort of boosting is one of those. Also, Workout of Britain suggests that it's you're no longer infectious after 11 days. And if that's the case, do we need a rethink on the 14-day scenario? Well, I think you're no longer infectious um, after you've had the infection. So remembering it takes a few days before that infection starts or, or presents itself in somebody. I think 14 days has always been, um, uh, it always included a margin of error. And so I think that's wise and everybody globally is still using the 14 days. I think what this also shows is that um, even we're finding people quite late in, in the illness have still got positive um, uh, tests. Uh, and studies out of both um, Singapore and South Korea now um, showing that actually they're not infectious even if they've still got a positive test. So I think that's encouraging. When and if we get a vaccine, should it be compulsory? Oh, well, that's another issue altogether. But our experience with uh, childhood and other vaccination is if you make it accessible and if you provide people with really good information, more than enough people will go and get vaccinated to create the herd immunity you're looking for. And we've had childhood immunisation rates right up to the you know, 93 94%, and that's well above what you need for um, herd immunity. But so didn't we have a great debate last year around the measles? We didn't have herd immunity because there is an anti-vax movement, if not a laziness movement, and people didn't want to get it, and we needed to make it compulsory. Well, uh, I think they're two different things. The anti-vax movement is not as big as um, uh, as the, the you know the group of people who might have vaccine hesitancy, and they're the ones who, if you make it available and you really uh, give them the right information, they will get vaccinated. Michael Baker said he'd hop on a plane tomorrow to Australia. Would you? 
Oh, well, I haven't got any uh, plans, to, uh, uh, flights to Australia planned, but I guess... Um, but would we, you? We, Happily. We, we, uh, look, I think the risk in Australia is is low, um, particularly in some parts of Australia. It's low in New Zealand, and um, rest assured there's work happening in pace to see how we could potentially open that border up and enable travel between the two countries.